Okay, welcome to lecture 9.2 of, uh, of the group theory course. This is the second and final lecture of chapter 9. In chapter 9 we are discussing uh, space groups. It's the first application of group theory to, to, to periodic solids. And uh, today we are going to explore two-dimensional space groups. Um, last time we discussed a little bit about three-dimensional uh, Bravais lattices and, and space groups. Uh, and today we are going to discuss two-dimensional space groups because there's a smaller number of Bravais lattice in two dimensions and also different numbers of a uh, smaller number of space groups in, in two dimensions as well. So, uh, and therefore it's easier to explore some of the concepts of group theory that we introduced uh, in the previous lecture uh, using the uh, 2D space groups. So there are f five, only five Bravais lattices in 2D as opposed to 14 in, in 3D and only 17 2D space group as opposed to 230 in three dimensions so so the, then we it, it's easier to go through all of them or most of them and and discuss their their properties so these are the five different Bravais lattices in, in 2D uh, we have the oblique oblique lattice two rectangular lattices this is a primitive rectangular and the and the centered rectangular lattice uh, the hexagonal lattice and the square lattice and they are shown here indicating the primitive vectors and uh, in most some cases the angles between primitive vectors that have special values depending on the lattice 90 degrees here 180 degrees here and 90 degrees here so these are the five different Bravais lattices, and uh, as I said, there are 14 2D space groups, and these are all of them. Um, they are numbered 1 through 17. They are also contained in the International Table of X-ray Crystallography. There is a section on 2D uh, uh, space groups. There are two oblique um, uh, space groups, both symorphic. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven rectangular. Some are some symorphic, and some of them are non-symorphic. Uh, then we have the square groups and the hexagonal groups. So uh, this is uh, the point group notation in the Hermann Magan notation. I, I'm going through them. Uh, I'm going to review s some of that today. So when you have two here, it means a two-fold axis. When you have m, it means a mirror plane. Four is a four-fold axis. Three and six are three-fold and six-fold axis. And these are the notation of the space groups, and they have both a full notation and short notation. <coughs> All right. So let me start just by showing you an example of how these uh, space groups are displayed in the, the international tables for X-ray crystallography. As an example, this is uh, the P4GM group. Um, it's a square group. The, it's group number 12. So uh, you, it, it typically shows the unit cell and also what we call a motif. A motif is a, a collection of points uh, that uh, helps us to, to identify the, the symmetry operations of the group. So in, in this particular case we have this uh, it, we are going to discuss this group in a minute but um, it, uh, P. Uh, let's let's me, let me discuss the notation first. Uh, P means it's a primitive 
uh, square Bravais lattice. There's, there's no centered Bravais lattice. Uh, the number four means that there is a fourfold rotation axis. You can see that the fourfold rotation axis goes through right here, the middle of the unit cell, the center of the unit cell, and also there's a fourfold rotation axis through the, the, the vertices the, of the unit cell. Okay? But you, you see that there are um, other points in the unit cell with a smaller symmetry. We are going to discuss that. There, sometimes there's a local symmetry or site symmetry or also point symmetry in some special points and they can be different. For instance, for this point is a four, there's a fourfold rotation axis but for this point right here there's only a two-fold rotation axis. So these different symbols they indicate the the the, the this rotation symmetry of the lattice in the sense that when you have like something like a, a, a ellipse you have a, a two-fold axis when you have a triangle is a three-fold axis when you have a square it's a four-fold axis and you when you have an hexagon you have a, a six-fold axis okay so um, what else? I mean, this group is P4GM. When you have a letter G, it means that it has a glide plane. It's a, it's a, a non-symorphic group. It has a, a glide plane, a glide symmetry. Uh, and you can see it right here. So this is the glide plane. You can see that if you reflect this motif uh, about this plane, you have to displace it by half of the unit cell to get to this square to the other motive so there's a glide plane right here a glide plane right here and there there are also mirror planes mirror planes are indicated by full lines and uh, glide planes are indicated by uh, dashed lines so uh, the, the the points the, the circle with a point inside and the, the empty circle, they are related by reflection. Okay, it's an, a way to indicate different points in your motif that are related by reflection. For instance, if you take this reflection plane, which is right, is, is basically this one, and you can see that this uh, point goes into that point. So a point with a, a dot goes into a, a, a circle without a dot when you apply a, a mirror plane okay so these are some uh, some of the uh, uh, features of of um, of motifs and and this this uh, diagrams that you have on on the the international tables okay all right so let me go through some of the uh, 2D space groups so uh, let me start uh, so they, they in our textbook they are all uh, uh, displayed in the appendix B in the appendix B you have the tables that are taken from the international table for x-ray crystallography for, for different uh, 2D groups and we start with group P1. This is group number one in our list. Is a oblique lattice, and this is the lowest symmetry group. It's just it doesn't have any rotation or reflection symmetry at all. So your motif is just a a, bo a dot in an arbitrary x and y position. So uh, so. It shows here only the unit cell and uh, a rep, uh, replicas by translation of your motif. And um, we are also going to get used to this uh, so-called Wyckoff uh, special positions. These are uh, taken from Wyckoff uh, book on crystal structures. So there is a standard notation for 
symmetry positions, but in, in this case, there's no symmetric position at all. So is the Wyckoff point is just one point. It's labeled A, okay? And uh, it has an uh, uh, arbitrary X and Y coordinate. So this is this is going to be clear in a minute when I I discuss other uh, possibilities in higher symmetry groups. So first of all, let's see then the the group two number two in, in the notation is also P two <coughs> the Hermann Maga notation, and you can see now that the motif is different. So the motif is different so that now you have a C2 axis. You have C2 axis in your crystal, uh, rotation by pi about the Z axis. Okay? And, uh, and because of that, then you have uh, a larger number of Wyckoff uh, uh, positions. And let me draw them here. This is something that you need to pay attention when you when you look at those tables first. It says the origin origin at 2. It means that the origin it's at any of those uh, special points a b c or d which has a point symmetry of 2. Point symmetry of 2 in the Hermann Maga notation means a c2 axis, right? So any any of these points with a with a, a C2 axis, it's an equally good choice of origin. So let me choose the origin right here in the middle of this unit cell. So this is what I, I uh, uh, in this uh, in this standard uh, notation. This is what I call the point special point A. So this is A. Special point B is at zero and half in units of primitive vectors. So this is B. It's zero in the X coordinate. And uh, so this is actually inverted X and Y, but it really doesn't matter. And 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 uh, and and C is a one half zero. And D is one half one half is this point right here. Okay? And point E is, again, a, a random x, y point. But, for instance, I, I could choose it as this guy right here, x, y, general x, y. This is a special point E, which is not special at all because it doesn't have any local symmetry. But what what's important to, to get used to is that when you apply all symmetry operations of the group, which is in this case is just one, is well, we have the identity, right? But for this group, you have only two symmetry operations: the identity and the C2, C2Z rotation. When you apply all of these operations for each special point, you're gonna have a list of other points in your unit cell that are mapped into each other. So what this is saying here is that for a symmetry point E, x, y goes into minus x minus y, which is just the result of the C to Z symmetry. But all the other points, A, B, C, D, they are mapped into themselves when you apply all the symmetry operations of the group, which is in this case is just identity and the C2. Okay, you notice, for instance, that if I use this uh, axis I wrote as rotation axis, B goes into B because you see th these are equivalent points by translation, right? So that's why there's only one one uh, set of uh, coordinates here for special point B. And the same for D and, and C. Okay? So these are the meaning of those one, two, three, these four columns. 
these four columns, they indicate the number of, of positions of each type, the Wyckoff notation, A, B, C, D, etc., the point symmetry. So the point symmetry here is uh, 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 it, it's this number. Again, in the hermann magan notation, two is just a, 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 a C2 axis, and one is no symmetry at all. It's just the identity. So the uh, special positions A, B, C, D, they have a local or point symmetry, two. And um, and um, the the special point E has a, a point symmetry one. Okay, so let let's see other example to illustrate this in more detail. So let's go to a rectangular space groups. Uh, for rectangular space groups, this is one possibility. The 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 2D rectangular group number 6, okay? Uh, it's a P2MM. P2MM means that the, the full symmetry of the group is, is uh, C2V, okay? So you have the symmetry operations that we, you have is the, are, are the, the identity, you have a, a C2Z, and you, you also have two reflections, sigma X and sigma Y, right? These are the two reflection planes that you have in this, in this uh, particular space group. So you have four symmetry operations. Uh, these are called, uh, uh, in, in uh, this is the, is the group C2V. In the Hermann Magan notation is the group M, 2MM. You have a two-fold axis and two mirror planes, uh, sigma X and, and sigma Y. And, but for short, a short notation is just MM. Because when you have two mirror planes, it implies the, the, the C2 axis, right? Because uh, the product of, of sigma x and sigma y is a C2, C2z. So it's sufficient to, to say that you have two mirror planes um, and you conclude that you also must have a, a, C2, a C2 axis. Okay? So let's, let's discuss again the, the, the different sites. Um, Starting from, from this one, starting from site A at the origin, we can choose the origin. Uh, you can choose it. You see, the, the origin is at 2 mm, is at the, uh, the most symmetric sites. That could be A, B, C, or D. Let me choose the origin here, at A, A here. Okay, so B is 0, 1 half, C is 1 half, 0. D is one half, one half, and then we have not uh, less symmetrical positions. Uh, position E. So uh, most most times they they. Okay, let let me choose here. Let me choose uh, X. And y. So, site E is a, an arbitrary value of x and a, a zero coordinate for y. So it's a, some point along this line, okay? Any point along this line. This is a site E. And site F is x one half. So this is site uh, f. And site g is zero y. 
and site H is one half Y. And finally, site I is uh, any X, Y point. Let me, any, anyone. Well, let me call it uh, this guy right here. That's just I. Okay. So, you can see that for site A, B, C, or D, the local symmetry is all the same. You have the full symmetry of the lattice, which is C to V. Okay, you have four symmetry operations. So these are all C two V sites. Let's see about how about site E. Site E, you see, uh, it's it has only one mirror plane. It's invariant under just one mirror plane. Okay, so site E and also uh, all, all, all those sites E, F, H, it, they, they belong, it, they have only identity and one mirror plane, it could be X or Y. So this is a, the C1H, M, right, this is not, this is a M, M or 2mm and this is just a m one mirror plane so that that's why this is the the point symmetry of that specific points okay and this is the c1h in the uh, in the other notation okay so all right so and again when you apply all the symmetry operations, uh, the 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 all the the highest symmetry points A, B, C, D, they are mapped into themselves, but the E, F, G, and H, they are they have partners, right? They are mapped into each other. So E, there's another uh, point E right here. When you apply, a, 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 for instance, a, a C2 rotation. The, the one of the E points goes into the other one and there's another G point right here and so on and so forth. Okay. So that, that's the, the meaning of this column. So there are two there are two E points and uh, there are four in general general points. So when you take a general XY coordinate point in the unit cell and you apply all symmetry operations you get four points, all those four points. In general, this number is actually the 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 uh, order of the point group, right? So and uh, and and if you take in general the number of points for each Wyckoff notation, it's typically the the order of the group divided by the order of this subgroup that the, uh, is, is, is the subgroup that, that corresponds to the local symmetry. In general, the local symmetry is a subgroup of, of the total symmetry. C1H is a subgroup of C2V. Okay, I hope this is clear. So let me go through. Oh, okay, this is to show you that when I have a uh, when I have the same unit cell in both cases I have rectangular unit cell but the motif is different you see that right this motif has four points and this motif has only two points and this motif has a lower symmetry so when when that happens you see that the the the, the group has a smaller number of symmetry operations so this one is just C1H. Uh, the point group is C1H only, and this is C2V. Okay. So this is a, an example just to show you that the motif can reduces the symmetry of the Bravais lattice. Okay. 
which is something that uh, we have discussed that before in the in the previous lecture. Okay. This is group three. Uh, P1, M1. So let's discuss some of the non-symorphic groups. So this is uh, group four. It's also a rectangular group. And you can see it right here that you have uh, glide planes, right? Indicated by the dashed lines. And you can see them right here. If you try, if you, if you, um, if you uh, reflect with respect to, to this plane, this, this guy goes right here. So there's not a point here, but you have to translate by a certain translation vector tau, which is in this case is one half, one half along y, uh, to get uh, to the the to map this point into that point. Okay. So this is an example of a, a glide plane, a, a non-symorphic group. Okay. This is another example of a rectangular group, also non-symorphic ones. So just to 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 indicate uh, the different symmetries here. Again, you have C two rotation. So what are the different symmetries in this in in, in the the alpha? tau notation, right, and space group notation. The different symmetries we, we have are the identity, and for the identity you don't need to translate. You have uh, C2, C2z, also without translation. And you have this sigma x plane. It's a sigma x operation, reflection along x. And you have a, a, a glide plane sigma y indicated by this dashed line when you when you do sigma y you have to translate by one half along x these are the the four symmetry operations here okay So this is another example just to illustrate uh, that we have all, we can also have centered rectangular unit cells. This is a, a rectangular unit cell in which you have a motif here at the vertices but also at the center of the unit cell. So for for rectangular cells you can have centered ones. So this is an uh, an example of that. Uh, let's see. Then this is a uh, uh, now going through to square space groups. This is uh, space group eleven. Uh, you have now four fold axes and two fold axes. We have sh we have shown you this group before. Uh, I'm going to discuss this particular group in uh, in an example that I'm going to do in the end of the lecture. So let's uh, just skip that for now. And finally, we have the hexagonal space groups. You can see the exact one of the hexagonal space groups with six-fold and three-fold and uh, two-fold axes. Okay, so. Uh, when you start to increase the number of symmetry operations of the group, you see that the number of possible Wyckoff uh, positions gets larger and larger. And uh, okay, so then 
these are the, the, the 2D space groups. Now, this is a discussion uh, on how in, typically one can uh, determine or, or obtain information about the crystal structure of a given material. So we're going to do one of one problem in the next problem set, which is exactly like that. I'm going to give you a chemical formula for a, a certain uh, material, and you will have to f just search in the literature and, and find out many different things about it, the crystal structure and the Wyckoff positions and so on and so forth. So how does one do that? Well, typically the experimental information comes from X-ray and neutron diffraction data. So if you are dealing with a, just an a unknown material, this is basically what you have to do first to get information about the structure. but if you are just looking at information about uh, some material that is already known, then you have to go through databases and and see you just want to search the structure, you have to go through one of those databases. So the most important source of information are, for instance, the, the Wyckoff original uh, books, set of books, on crystal structures. It has the crystal structure of many, many different compounds. Of course, now this this book is in, in our library, but of course nowadays uh, a lot of that information is uh, on online as well. You can search this different uh, uh, sites. Um, you can also try to Google and you find original articles for some of the, the compounds and materials that you are interested in. And and also, the as I said before, the international tables for X-ray crystallography will have uh, detailed information about the space groups, okay, including all the Wyckoff positions. So once you, once you determine what a space group your system belongs to, then you go ahead and use your the information on the international tables for X-ray crystallography. Okay. So let me briefly uh, do an example on how you you can uh, search online information about uh, a given material. Let's use an as an example titanate uh, bar barium titanate. This is an example we discussed last time. It has a cubic structure, P3, PM minus 3M. And um, so, but let's suppose you you didn't know about that. So how one would uh, search online? Just if you knew just the the formula, baryon, titanium, and oxygen. So the the way to do that. Is it's going? It's going to one of those databases. For instance, this is one of them. This is how it looks like. And you go here. There are many ways of searching data, but one of the ways is the is the, to search by the the chemical formula. You go right here, and the, you see the number of elements. You can search for for compounds up to eight different elements. In our case we have only three. You have barium, uh, titanium, and oxygen. But if you only choose those three elements, it's, it also will, uh, when, you, when you search information, it will give you information about uh, uh, Compounds containing these three atomic species, but combined with other atomic species. So I have to restrict here uh, the the maximum and minimum number of elements in our uh, 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 material, which is three. So I'm I'm just going to search for systems containing barium, titanium, and oxygen. Okay. Then I I, I 
press send and it's going to search and as a result it, it gives me this uh, different systems this is a more complicated formula but these are the ones I'm interested in uh, uh, barium 1 oxygen 3 titanium 1 and you can see here that uh, actually there are two different possibilities two different <coughs> Uh, phases let's say but it seems that uh, this is the cubic phase and this seems to be a tetragonal phase but you see the lattice constant is very are very close so thi this seems to be a small distor distortion with respect to the more symmetric phase so this is the one we are interested into so if you want then you can search the original uh, reference uh, and in this paper you're going to find all the cell parameters and uh, uh, for other materials you are going to find also the, the Wyckoff positions and so on and if you want you can also see the uh, picture of the unit cell it shows only the, the non-equivalent atoms you see it seems that this unit cell is it's very different it seems very different than this one but it's actually the same unit cell because you have only one baryon, one titanium atom and all the oxygen atoms they are related by symmetry operations so you only have to to specify the position of one of them to be able to identify completely this structure so in this unit cell you have one barium, one titanium and one oxygen atom Okay, this is a um, one possible way of uh, uh, searching for these uh, databases. And in one of the problems in our problem set, you will have to do that. Okay, for a different compound. Okay, so let's do an e example. Let's do problem 9.2 as an example. So this is problem 9.2 uh, list number uh, uh, letter A list the real space symmetry operations of the non-symorphic two-dimensional square space group P4GM uh, space group number 12. Okay, so I go in the uh, in the international tables for x-ray crystallography and I search for uh, space group number 12 P4GM and this is the information that I have there and it asks me to list the real space symmetry operations so what are all the symmetry operations of the group so let's center here at the origin and let's see uh, what are the symmetry operations about the origin? Um, so, of course, I have the identity, and for the identity, I don't need to translate. And this, you see that this is a C4 axis. So I have I have C4 plus or minus two pi over four, and also a C2 operation. So I have C2. And I have C4, let's say C4 plus, and C4 minus. Sorry. Without any translations. Okay. All right. Very good. So, but you see here that. Uh, uh, I also have reflection planes, okay, and I have both. Uh, I have mirror planes and I have glide planes. And let's see. The, it seems that the glide planes in the diagonals, right, and the mirror planes are x and y uh, symmetry operations. So uh, let's see uh, what happens if I apply a sigma x. operation 
uh, about this plane here, you will see that I don't recover the same motif. To recover the same motif, I have to apply a sigma x operation and translate with respect to this vector. Let me call it tau. So tau is one half, one half, right? So you can see that uh, I have to translate by tau when I uh, apply sigma x. Let's see, for this guy, sigma x goes to right here. So if I translate by tau, goes right there okay so it seems to be working all right so uh, and and the same for sigma y and um, And for sigma xy and sigma minus xy. So these two diagonal planes, they also have to couple with a with, uh, translation by a vector smaller than the unit cell. Okay? So these are different ways to take uh, uh, to apply these different operations with re with respect to the origin. Okay. So and this is a non-symorphic group, as you can see. Okay. Letter B. Explain all the open and field points and the solid and dashed lines in the diagram. So, the, as we said before, the open and field points, they are related by reflection. You see that besides the reflection planes that uh, go through the origin, there are also these other reflection planes right here. And you can notice that uh, open dots and field dots, they are uh, related by reflection in these diagonal planes. And the solid and dashed lines, they correspond to mirror, mirror uh, planes and uh, glide planes. All right. Um, explain the point symmetry entries for each of the side symmetries A, B, C, D on the table. So these are uh, these are the so-called point symmetries or, or side symmetries in this column here of our table, okay? So you can see here that this happens frequently for, for non-symorphic groups. That's not a single point that it's mapped into, each, into each, it, uh, itself by all symmetry operations of the group, not only the origin because of this, this, this glide plane operations, okay? So the symmetry point A, it has already a multiplicity of two. So A is here at the origin, and this is an also A. So it has a multiplicity of two, okay? and uh, <clears throat> explain the symmetry. So this uh, in the Herman Magan notations is, uh, is four. It means it's just uh, 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 C4 group. So the symmetry operations are identity, 
C4 plus C4 minus and C2. This is the four. And what about site B? Site site B is one half zero zero one half. It's uh, these sides here. And they are mapped into each other with respect to some of the symmetry operations. You can see that at those positions, the local rotation symmetry is not C4, but it's only C2. Okay? And that's why you have here MM. It's, uh, it's the, the symmetry operations are the identity uh, C2, and you have two mirror planes crossing this, this position. Sigma X, Sigma, Sigma X, Y, and Sigma minus X, Y. Okay. And then you can do the same for C and D. You can you can do it by yourself. So let let's go ahead and and um, and let's do letter C. So uh, C and D are a point along those those lines. Right? Actually, along yeah along this this uh, let's see x. One half plus x, so it it's a uh, is a, a point along this diagonal. And you have four of those in your unit cell. Okay, let's do letter C. Explain the differences in the symmetry operations between. the 2D space group number 12 and the 2D space group number 11. So these are the two uh, pictures that you have for these two space groups in the book, number 12 and number 11. Well, what are the differences? Well, there, there are lots of differences. The, the motives are, are different. In, in, in group 11, you don't have glide planes. You have only mirror planes. Um, what else? Well, th there's another question here. Why does the figure for group 11 has dashed lines, although it doesn't have a glide plane? That's an interesting question because you see this is a you could see that as a glide plane, right? But it's a, it's a well, I think they call it a non-essential glide plane because you can you, you have a glide operation that takes this motif into this one, right? You reflect and then you translate by this vector. But the same symmetry operation can be written as a combination of reflection, just a simple mirror reflection, and a translation by a unit cell vector. So if you, if you reflect by this regular mirror plane right here in the diagonal, you take this guy to this guy, and then if you translate by a, a unit cell vector R, you take this guy to this guy. And that's why uh, it's not really a essential or true glide plane. It, it can be, this glide plane operation can be written as a combination of a simple, simple mirror plane plus a translation by a unit cell vector. But even though 
it's it's uh, they it's drawn they it's drawn here in the in the in the in the picture from the international tables these these uh, uh, even those glide planes they are they are drawn here so that's why this figure has dashed lines even though it's not a non symorphic group it's a it's a symorphic group and the next question is why group 12 is not classified as a centered space group well there there are no centered space groups uh, there there are no centered square space groups right because uh, if you have a square lattice Try to draw that. See if you have a square lattice. Simple square lattice. And let's suppose I want to, to construct a centered square lattice and I I put another lattice point right here in the middle. So then this is not a centered square lattice because it's just a regular square lattice with a smaller lattice constant which is this one. Right? Because that's the reason why you you don't have centered square lattices but only rectangle uh, centered rectangular lattice in 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 2D and the same is true for um yeah th this is the th this is the case for 2d this is also related to the fact that you don't have body centered and face centered uh, rect uh tetragonal lattices this is the same idea okay and i guess this is it i think this is uh, chapter nine and let's see and these are the problem sets for chapter 9 which are due next Wednesday and thank you for your attention <laughs>